Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Welcome to the dojo. This is a conversation that I had with Harry, the rideshare guy Campbell, just last Friday on April 10th. We talk about all things rideshare. We talk about uh, COVID-19. We talk about how quickly Uber and Lyft responded to it, how they're treating their drivers. Does Uber and Lyft have any social responsibility for all the taxpayer money that's going to... uh, cover the unemployment payments. At the end, Harry and I both give Uber and Lyft a a score, a grade from A to F. And uh, we're pretty close, but not not really that close. And uh, and a whole bunch more. It's a long 45-minute chat. And uh, Harry shares a lot of his feelings about AB5 and and, uh, just what Uber and Lyft are doing. So enjoy. Let's get into it. Jay Crater and Harry, the rideshare guy Campbell, letting it all fly for 45 minutes. Let's go. All right, Jay, how are you doing today? Awesome. Awesome. It's uh, Friday. And uh, yeah, it's interesting getting used to this kind of schedule. You know, Uh, I used to go out and drive during the week on the weekends, and now I'm staying home. And I don't even go out. I go out <laughs> to take a walk, and then I go out and maybe get some coffee and some food, and that's it. It's like yeah. seeing human beings is like seeing a rare animal now. It's, it's a it's very unusual times we're living in, my friend. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think one thing that I know I've found myself it's it's interesting. I've almost sort of just resigned, tried to resign myself to the fact that there's nothing to do or nowhere to go, and kind of I almost feel like I've become at peace with it, right? Because it's Mm. like, oh, I don't need to really worry about what we're going to do today. We're just going to do the same thing we do every day, chill, relax with my son, go for a walk, maybe go for a bike ride, you know, maybe order lunch or dinner, maybe make dinner. There's not a whole lot of choices that you have to make. And I think sometimes that can be a good thing. And you know me, I think most of my audience uh, knows I'm sort of an eternal optimist. So I'm always looking for the silver (laughs) linings in any situation. And so that's what, that's what I'm going with right now. Yeah. I, I've noticed I haven't been like that. I, uh, I, I'm far more resistant to this. I, you yeah. know, my, my core value is spirit of adventure and I do yeah. not like being told I can't get on an airplane and go to Thailand, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, well, I will yeah. say, I think if you pull up flight radar, there are actually quite a number of flights still happening. So you could, I think, actually still fly if you want to. There no, they, just no, may be. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're not letting any any foreigners into Thailand right now. Oh, okay. You can't, so you certain, cannot, I know certain countries are giving it the uh, Ixne, but uh, I'm sure there's yeah. a country out there. So if you're feeling real adventurous, you do yeah, have I'll at do least that. some option. So I guess enough about you and I, though. I do appreciate uh, yep. the update on your life and you hearing out my issues. <laughs> Likewise, <laughs> So I think uh, today I really wanted to bring you on because I've been thinking about this topic for a while. And obviously, we've been covering on the blog and the YouTube channel and even the podcast a little about this whole coronavirus and the pandemic situation and just all the different facets of it. But I sort of wanted to, you know, not recap the whole situation with you, but kind of like start a little bit at the beginning and just walk through Uber and Lyft's response to the coronavirus and kind of how that has affected drivers and, you know, kind of take 
take things back. So I think you're the perfect person to do it since obviously you're still driving or you were, you know, are still a driver and maybe yeah. not doing it right now, but, uh, and also kind of covering it right alongside myself from, you know, sort of a, a quasi blogging uh, YouTubers point of view. And, uh, you know, for me, it feels like, I don't know, I guess just at a high level, I feel like Uber and Lyft have done a lot of the right things just two to three weeks late in nearly every single scenario. And that's kind of my, you know, 10,000 feet view. I'm curious to know what you think at a high level. How have they done? Yeah, well, I mean, I remember thinking this is a really big problem, Mm -hmm. you know, and in the in the beginning, it was like, well, how big is this thing going to get? And then at some point it was like, this is a really big, big deal. Yeah. You know, drivers are driving around, they could get sick. And it seemed like it wasn't for another two weeks that Uber or Lyft actually even said anything about it to the yeah. drivers, you know? And um, and it seems that's consistent with, with Uber and Lyft, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, it just kind of burns me that I'm a taxpayer, you're a taxpayer. And rather than Uber and Lyft uh, helping uh, helping out with unemployment, you know, we yeah. the taxpayers are going to be covering the dr- the drivers. Yeah. You know. Well, I and, think we'll and, definitely get into the unemployment side and the, yeah and the yeah, issues yeah. there. I mean, I'm but actually I, I just, pulling up. You know, I, I wanted to pull up our YouTube channel quickly because I know you did a video pretty early on about uh, coronavirus, and I know it was kind of when you and I were still discussing things. And it was actually, it looks like it was almost over a month ago. I'm going to pull up the exact date. It was mm-hmm. March 3rd, 2020, that we actually published our first video about. Um, the coronavirus. And I don't know if you remember at the time, like, I think you, I, I, I was surprised that that video wasn't more popular at the start. I think it only got one or 2000 views at the start, which is pretty low for us on YouTube. And mm-hmm. I was sort of thinking to myself like, Oh, this, I, you know, it was almost like there was this big wave, I think a week or two before and people were scared about it, but then it seemed to die down. But mm-hmm. then again, by mid March, it like obviously really picked up steam. Is that sort of what, what you felt like now that I'm bringing yeah. up the dates? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean the, the, the whole white house response you know, in the beginning was this isn't a big deal. And and I think a lot of people, you know, heard that and felt like, oh, OK, maybe this isn't yeah. as, big, as big a deal. You know, say what you want about Trump. But, you know, the president of the United States and all his advisors, the, you know, the, the, the word coming out was not a big deal. Fifteen cases. It's going to be down to zero. You know, we're going to we're going to we're not China. We're going to take care of this. Right. Yeah. And and, and then. You know, then Trump had that one uh, news conference and it was like, holy crap, this is serious. You know, people yeah. can't fly from Europe all of a sudden. Right. Yeah. And, and then it seemed like days after that it was shelter in place in California. It was like, yeah. wow. You know, so, yeah, it, I do think seem... there was a, a period of time where there's a question mark about how bad this could get. Yeah. And uh, once it got resolved, then then our YouTube videos really started to to get a lot of views. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's funny, right? Because this initial view, video we did, I think, in, on March 3rd, it now has 6,500 views, but I know in the first week or two, it only had maybe a couple thousand views. And, you know, I think if I go and look at your last coronavirus video on YouTube, I think it's probably close closing in or a couple of the popular ones. One has 84,000 views in five days yep. and another has, uh, you know, almost a hundred thousand views in a little less than a week and a half. So obviously there's been a, t- you know, a big shift. And so I think that's why I wanted to bring you on and really explore like yeah. how did we get from there where no one cared about it or no one really thought about it to here and also how uber i mean really focus on how uber and lyft have you know sort of you know been there or not been there because i think the you know i guess the initial choice that drivers had to make and even still have to make today because there are even though demand is way down i mean there's still drivers driving i pulled up my uber app yesterday and there was a car within three minutes there were eight within right. eight cars within less than a mile of me here in the mid middle of los angeles so obviously there are still people driving and I think that's the the big question that people have to make right now is from the driver's side is if it's if if driving is something that you you know have to do I guess basically because I think that you know you and I um, would not drive during these times but obviously there are many people and you know I think everyone's in a different situation so I'm not saying people should or shouldn't I just know my personal situation and for the drivers who are driving I mean it seems like you know they kind of want to do everything they can to protect 
protect themselves. And it's only, you know, in the past week or two that Uber is now sending out cleaning supplies and, you know, some form of PPE. So I don't know, I guess to me, like, that seems pretty late. What do you think? Right. I completely agree. I mean, it's a tough choice, you know, I mean, for drivers to Mm. make. If, If you have to make money to, you know, put food on the table and Uber and Lyft, you know, has been your main thing. It's yeah. tough to make the decision to uh, to drive, you know, because yeah. you, you are not only risking your own life, but since this thing can go undetected for two or three days while you can still spread the spread it, you know, you could bring it home. Right. And, and whoever you live with could get it and whoever you come in yeah. contact can get it. So th- that was the decision I made was was to stop. But I understand many drivers don't have that. Um, that, that choice, you know, they have to, they they have to keep driving, even though I I saw an article about some driver in San Francisco and he drove for like 10 hours and made like $80, you know, I mean, that's like a fraction of what, what you could make. Especially in San Francisco. Uh, (laughs) Especially. Yeah. Right. That's a $300 day, not an, not an $80 day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a tough choice. And I mean, part of me thinks, should should Uber and Lyft just stop, you know, mm-hmm. just not even allow drivers to drive, you know, especially when we're in this shelter in place, um, you know, yeah. the, the governor here has said, you know, stay at home, stay at home. Yeah. Well, and, what, what do you think? And, do you think that they should be, you know, Uber and Lyft should be, should stop operating right now? I do. I do. Yeah. Because, because. It's obviously how can it not help to spread the disease? You know, and, until we got this thing worked out, you're you're putting two people together in a in a little metal box, right? Yeah. And you don't know if either one of them is contagious, and then that <laughs> person who's driving is going to interact with ten, fifteen people in yeah. a day. You know, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a health. It's a it's a health scare. And when there are other things that the drivers could do, delivering food, delivering, you know, marijuana, delivering groceries, alcohol, uh, delivering yeah, there's pizzas, a million things you can deliver right now. Right. Right. Um, that would force people to, to even stay more in, in place um, rather than being tempted by all oh, just grab an Uber and, you know, get a ride. Yeah. So, well, yeah, my. Yeah, yeah let, let me take the counter there, because I think what I've been hearing from drivers and sort of what also makes sense is, you know, especially in a place like California, it's shelter in place, you know, don't leave your house unless it's for essential items or, you know, tasks or jobs or work or whatever it might be. So if you're someone who doesn't own a car and you had the option of, you know, you had to get to work or you had to go buy groceries or you had to do something, doctor's appointment, you know, essential doctor's appointment, whatever it is, I think actually, you know, in that case, like Uber and Lyft are one of your best options. I, I I don't know if you were on my YouTube live the other night when I asked this, I did a very informal poll, not scientific at all, but mm. I asked a couple mm. hundred people that were watching live, you know, if they would prefer, you know, if they had to take a ride, would they take an Uber or Ly- an Uber and Lyft or get on a public bus? And mm. overwhelmingly, you know, most people responded Uber Lyft. And I think that that actually makes a lot of sense because even though there's 10 or 15 people that might be coming in and out of a car in a single day, and you know an uber on a public bus there's a hell of a lot more people that are going to be coming in on a single day even you know during these times where there's you know a lot less demand and you know people are touching mm-hmm. the bars and you know i guess if you think about it like i've been thinking about something lately and i kind of think uh, i think about it like the different like when you're thinking about safety right now during this pandemic, which modes are the safety, safest? Which modes of transportation? Like probably walking is pretty mm-hmm. safe, but you obviously have a limited range. And then from there, it's I think things like bicycles, micro mobility, even scooters, uh, even shared scooters and shared e bikes. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. hard to just slap some gloves on. You're not like licking the handlebars, right? right? <laughs> you're right. out in the open. It's just you. And then from there, you know, I think there's a big step up to Uber and Lyft. And on top of that, you know, public transportation. Public transportation so you know and Mm. obviously that you know if you own your own car you're in a Mm. you can kind of just drive yourself around but that's kind of how i look at it there i don't know what do you think no it's it's a good argument i i uh it seems like we 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 could really restrict the amount of uber and lyft use to just the essentials you know just to get to the grocery store just to get food just to get medical care but i i'm sure there are a lot of people (laughs) using uber and lyft for way more than that Mm. uh, because it's available you know, yeah. because it's available. Um, so I think yeah. there's a middle, I think there's a middle ground. Um, yeah, I perhaps, like that idea. Perhaps Uber and Lyft could, you know, just pick a few drivers and, and, and 
make sure they're t- completely sealed off and and um, you know not not at risk and and all they do is handle the the essentials you know yeah. taking people to a doctor and and taking people to grocery stores the things that you absolutely have to do yeah. until this until this passes because it is spreading more and more of this virus and yeah. and as we're seeing you know we may lose a hundred hundred thousand Americans you know this round yeah. so it's, it's a mean, serious serious health concern. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. And I guess to sort of defend Uber and Lyft for a second, since I think so far we've kind of criticized their response uh, (laughs) to the coronavirus. I mean, I will say, you know, they are now passing out, you know, PPE and cleaning supplies. And, um, you know, there is a shortage of the these items. So it's not like they can just go and buy this off the shelf for the drivers that are still driving and still active. And, you know, I've even seen that Uber, I don't I don't know, I'm sure Lyft is doing it too. But you know, Uber is doing ads now that sort of are encouraging people to stay at home, which is a little strange, but you know, it's kind of cool. It's like, Hey, Uber's telling me not to ride Uber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, only for essential items. But, um, I guess an interesting middle ground could be if they restricted it to those essential rides only. And I I do think that they're using messaging like that. I guess it's just not required. And anecdotally, I have heard, you know, one of the silver linings right now for the drivers that are still driving is that they are taking, you know, nurses to hospitals or frontline workers to the grocery store or two restaurants and so sort of right. keeping a lot of that supply chain so that's definitely been you know kind of one positive aspect of the story i think the one thing though that I will say is I think Uber and Lyft were very slow to react, especially on the driver's side. A a moment that stood out in time to me was when Mm. Uber told all of their corporate employees in San Francisco that they needed to work from home. And at Mm. the same time, you know, they have a couple million drivers out there still driving. And I just thought to myself, wow, that's like a pretty, you know, Mm. stark contrast. Uber is basically admitting like this thing is serious and dangerous, but they weren't, you know, doing shit for drivers yet uh, in in you know, really. And I think that that kind of, you know, I imagine that, um, if they, you know, if they owned the cars or they were more responsible for the drivers, you know, whether it was employees, drivers or whatever it was, I think they would have been a lot better prepared. So I don't really buy the argument that Uber and Lyft were taken, you know, by surprise by this. I think it just wasn't a priority. That's sort of the best way to put it in my my mind. and isn't that the relationship that Uber and Lyft have with with the drivers? This has been yeah, yeah. I been, guess it's not been, a surprise, <laughs> right? This has been the relationship. You know, we we're just sort of left to fend for ourselves, but not not completely like an independent contractor because there are certain things we can't do on our own, right? Um, yeah, if we were employees, this would be a completely different scenario. You know, yeah. we would we wouldn't be, you know. We wouldn't be worried about whether or not we're actually going to get unemployment benefits. <laughs> Let, let's face it. You know, we, yeah. every, everybody I, who's uh, a driver has applied and and I haven't heard of anyone getting any benefits, you yeah, know, who said I, they worked for Uber or Lyft, you know. Yeah. And we're definitely going to talk about unemployment. So uh, I know we're both itching to get into that because that's what a lot of uh, people have been asking questions about. The, the, the only thing I want to touch on, though, before we get into, you know, some of the unemployment and I guess employment issues are sort of, you know, like what drivers are doing now. I mean, we talked about that first cohort of drivers, you know, if they're still driving, you know, I think that's a pretty small number. And then the ones that, you know, have either quit ride or, you know, sort of not doing ride share because, you know, I think there's this big group of drivers, you know, especially drivers who are older, who have, you know, other are immunocompromised or have other health issues and, you know, have gotten doctor notes. So I think there's this whole group of other drivers who, you know, just don't want to do it because there's legitimate or, you know, they just don't want to do it. And mm-hmm. it seems like a lot of those drivers drivers are doing things like switching to delivery, Instacart, food delivery, grocery deliveries, pretty much everything there. Mm -hmm. Um, I I guess that's sort of like the main, I mean, I guess that's really the only other work opportunity there is, you know, if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, right? Is that sort of what you found or is there something I'm missing? Yeah, no, unless you can go get a job for, you know, for some company, you know, like a regular, regular job. Um, yeah, if you're going to drive, yeah, those if are the options. If you have to work, if but you, you don't want to do Uber and Lyft. You, right. You got, you got to go deliver something else. Food, yeah. groceries. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, pizza. I know the... Pizza. Apparently a lot of people are eating pizza right now. Yeah. Papa <laughs> I John's ordered a pizza the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's though. That's my, uh, my fast food pizza of choice. Your, but, 
Um, yeah. And I mean, I guess I will say just we can quickly touch on delivery services, but I know I've been hearing from drivers that Instacart is by far the most popular right now. Um, I mean, there's still a ton of variability though. You know, Instacart workers were striking last week and I'm also seeing pay stubs from Instacart, uh, career or, you know, shoppers that are making $2,000 a week, which I've, I don't think I've ever seen on mm. Instacart before this mm. pandemic. So you really have some, you know, like always like very different experiences and on food delivery it seems yes. like more incremental right like there's like a little more demand but it isn't you know it isn't cutting it for a lot of uber and lyft drivers that are used to making more i don't know i i, I know you haven't done right, a ton of food right. delivery but what, what have you seen there well what i what i re- one thing i read was that uh people were offering big tips for yeah. their Instacart orders. And then by the time they came and de- made the delivery, <laughs> they lowered the tip down to, to, to like nothing. That There's yeah. a fierce competition to get the, gro- the groceries delivered. Yeah, uh, I think really, obviously that's, really that's a pretty shitty, shitty thing to do. Thing to yeah. do. But I, I, I also know, yeah. I, I have a feeling that that's a combination of, pro- you know, of course there's always bad people out there, but I think it's probably also a combination of the fact that, you know, right now groceries don't have great, stock right i mean i think Mm, depending mm -hmm. on the city you're in and the grocery store that you go to and so the way that instacart works is you know a a user will select let's say 20 or 30 items and if half of those items are out of stock your bill is going to be maybe 50 percent cut in half so if you were expecting expecting to tip 50 dollars for a hundred dollars worth of items and then you only get 50 dollars and half the stuff wasn't there you know you're probably not going to be super happy and even though it's not the shopper's fault at all um I think that Instacart, (laughs) you know, Instacart needs to do a much better job of educating the customer. And, you know, for example, like I would like to see Instacart come out with a policy that says, you know, if you want to change the tip after you have to submit a request and, you know, you have to tell Instacart, okay, here's why I want to lower the tip. And if it was because the shopper screwed something up, like you asked for oranges and they gave you apples, okay, you can lower the tip. But if it's because they didn't have any of the items you wanted, that's not the courier's fault at all so right, i think right. again right like some of these issues you know obviously instacart is seeing a ton of growth and all, mm. all you know super high demand but I, I think that they definitely uh can probably make some easy communications there and avoid stories like this that you know popped up in yeah. cnn and now everyone's pissed at instacart <laughs> I, I i know i was an instacart uh, customer for a year every week i had stuff delivered and it was as simple as my avocados were too hard would make yeah. me you know change my tip you know yeah. so People get very picky when it comes to their food, and they want it just right. And a lot of times, as you said, it's it has nothing to do with the shopper; it just has to do with they're they're out of they're out of particular items. So yeah, it, you know, yeah. So I think that you know we we talked about the I guess some of the options for these workers, you know, these Uber and Lyft drivers, the grocery excuse me, grocery delivery, you know, food delivery, just delivery in general. Um, I guess the only other thing that I would touch on is that it does seem like there are a flood of application, you know, like there might be 20 million unemployed across the country, um, you know, soon. And so, you know, not only are these Uber and Lyft drivers switching over to food delivery, there's a whole bunch of normal people that are switching over to food delivery. I saw that Postmates, you know, they're no longer um, paying for new driver signups and, you know, DoorDash has a waiting list in a bunch of cities. So I guess my my advice to there to drivers has been, and I think it's been something we've all, we've always advised. We've always told drivers, Hey, sign up for Uber and Lyft. Even if you only right. drive Uber, you want to have Lyft as a backup. And I, I even think I wrote in my book, like throw in a delivery service in there too, because right. you never know, you know, having that diversification as a driver is, you know, smart as a business owner and whether you realize it or not, you're a business owner as a driver, right? So you kind of yeah. want to diversify. You get, get your, get your name on the list. Right. right. So yeah. that in a situation all these, like waiters, all these other right. service industries where they just lost their, their revenue. Yeah. They're, they're looking. So, yeah. So you, it's just a difficult situation, isn't it? Yeah. For, and I mean, yeah. I think that obviously the, you know, and that's why our, we can start talking about unemployment now because, you know, these are, this is not going to like these solutions we have, I think are going to help a few people, right? If you were, you know, if you've been listening to my podcast or, you know, watching our videos for a while, you better have a plan B, you know, thinking about your plan B already and have sure. you signed up for multiple services. And if you haven't, you know, um, I don't really feel bad for you because you haven't been listening to us, but at the same time, you know, if you're someone <laughs> brand new, um, 
um, right to the content and to the channel, then, you know, that's sort of where we've been helping a lot. We've been trying to help a lot of people, you know, navigate uh, unemployment because it seems like, you know, this government contribution is going to be pretty huge. And, you know, I don't think we need to get into all the intricacies there. We've got three or four videos and live streams that I've done over on the YouTube channel that yeah. go really in depth about unemployment. But I just get, I guess just at a high level, since I know you've been tracking this very closely, what, what, have, what have you seen on unemployment and sort of what's the uh, latest and greatest and what should we expect? Well, you know, I've been saying that I really believe it's coming, you know, mm-hmm. that we're going to get we're the drivers, independent contractors to be specific are, are going to get some unemployment money. Yeah. Um, but I've had I've gotten some messages from some drivers, you know, who uh, from the website. They've mm-hmm. said they don't think it's going to happen, you know, that 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 hmm. the government is just by the time. I mean, the so I guess legally by, it's written into the CARES Act. So you know, I mean, right, I guess right, technically right. it's supposed but, to happen. But right. as but, you know, yeah, I always well, tell people sh- don't don't count your chips till they're in your bank account. But <laughs> right, right, Exa- exactly. Um, but it's got me, you know, I, I'm, what if it takes three months yeah. and then this whole thing is blown over, you know, and everyone's yeah. back to work and they just say, well, you know, we spent all the money. There's no money gotcha. left, you know, but that, that, so that's been brought to my attention. I, I, I do firmly still believe that, you know, as long as you've applied and you, you're not working, doing another job, um, cause that's an interesting situation, you know, yeah. you, uh, you, you you're no longer driving for Uber, but now you are driving for Instacart. Do you get unemployment benefits because you you're you're working? You know you're working and bringing money in. Um, I, I don't. There's still a lot of questions about. Yeah. About. I know we've gotten you know, a lot of questions about that, and specifically, you know, people who have other, you know, completely, you know, like a normal nine to five job and do Uber and Lyft on the side, and then others like you mentioned who are not making any money on Uber and Lyft, and then are now working for Instacart. And I guess what I've told people, and I think the advice that I like the best out of you know all the crap that I've told people over the past few weeks is, you know, generally unemployment is reduced if you have other income sources. So I would imagine that if you're driving for Uber and Lyft and, you know, all your rides go to zero and you're now, you know, applying for unemployment, but you also start working for Instacart, I suspect that your unemployment is going to be reduced by the amount you're making per week from Instacart. And because that's sort of traditionally how unemployment works. And so, you know, what I've told people is, hey, maybe you want to hedge your bets. And maybe, you know, if you only need a couple hundred bucks a week right now, just work to the amount that you need and then spend that other time like developing a skill, starting a business, something that isn't going to leave sort of a a financial footprint, right? Like you could go and, you know, let's say it was, you know, it's not this easy to start a YouTube channel, but let's say you could go and start a blog and write a hundred posts and you knew that once you turned in those hundred posts, it would equal $10,000. That's not how it is in real life. But let's say that Mm. was the situation. I would be working on those hundred posts right now so that when unemployment runs out, I could turn them all in. And so you want to sort of find opportunities or situations like that. And that's kind of what I've thought about unemployment there. Yeah. Uh, But the, and the other part of unemployment is the $600 per week for four months, you know, which really doesn't seem to have anything to do with how much you've earned in the past, right? That's just supposed to be extra on top of it. So there's still just a lot of questions, you know? And, and And so if we talk about Uber and Lyft's role specifically in this unemployment situation, I mean, I think the, the thing that I've been a little surprised hasn't been more of a story. And I think what I've been telling people is, you know, right now it's, it's, this is like a human issue, right? Like we're trying to figure out how do we get money into the hands of the people, the drivers, the gig workers that need it most. And Mm -hmm. once that's resolved, like, I don't really care how the money gets there or what, you know, what the, you know, there weren't, Mm -hmm. you know, like Democrats and Republicans like work together on this bill, which is very rare because they were just like, we know this is a problem. It's such a big problem. We have to get money into people's hands. Let's, you know, put aside our differences. But I am surprised, you know, so I guess what Uber and Lyft have done in regards to unemployment, you know, Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi, before the CARES Act was passed, he wrote a letter to President Trump basically asking for gig workers to be included in the CARES Act so that they would get unemployment. And, you know, I, I don't know how much of a difference that made or not, 
but the gig workers were included. And I mm -hmm. think I've seen a couple of people ask the question that, you know, okay, so Uber, I think has about eight to $10 billion in cash right now in their bank mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, is, should Uber or should the government be contributing to unemployment or should Uber, um, yeah, Uber and, and Lyft, not, right? And it's not the government. Who, and it's who not the, the government. government? Who, who does is the it? government get the money from, from you and me paying our taxes every single year? So, I mean, so and, and we've, I guess we've, like we've, my question to you, Jay, is, is this, you know, basically a government or a taxpayer bailout of Uber and Lyft, like with this whole unemployment situation? Well, yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it clearly is. Yeah. Right. I mean, we, yeah, like you said, it's a human issue. It's, it's also just a U.S. economy issue. You know, people have, you know, trillions of dollars in their in their 401ks. And they're watching that, you know, just shrink down. And if the economy keeps tanking, it's going to get worse and worse. And, you know, and then the chances of recovering quickly are, are gone. And we're into this thing for several years. So, yeah, yeah you got to get money in our pockets so that we can actually start spending and buying things again so that the economy doesn't just keep going, you know, in, in this right. direction. Yeah, I guess I'm just not the biggest fan, though, of rewarding. And it, it's funny, we'll, we'll start talking. I'm sure we'll get into the employee versus independent contractor debate in a second and how that's affected by all this. But, you know, I think my my listeners, and my viewers know that I, you know, I, I, AB5 in California, whether drivers should be employees or not is a complicated issue. But if you ask for my short answer, I was always a no, I don't I don't think drivers should be employees. But what I do think in this situation, like it really has made me, you know, like I I don't think the government should be bailing out drivers. I think it's Uber and Lyft's responsibility. And at a minimum, I would have liked to see a shared responsibility, right? If, right. if you know, and that's kind of how unemployment insurance works. Usually right. it's employer and employee contribute. And, um, you know, so I, I guess I don't like the fact that the government came in. I, I like that workers were bailed out, but I don't like that it was the government and really taxpayers that had to do it. I think, you know, maybe a better solution would have been for Uber and Lyft to match whatever the government contributed um, mm. and that kind of would have been a nice middle ground since you know maybe asking Uber and Lyft to do it they probably wouldn't have done anything and mm. that isn't realistic but I think if the government you know and, and that's where it's tough because you have to get something passed quickly to get money into people's hands but at the same time right I really I don't like the idea that Uber and Lyft were basically bailed out and it sort of rewards them for this for business their, model for their kind of bad behavior yeah 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 it does it's it we're totally bailing them out and why you know, why? Because they won't treat with really the respect they deserve. We're, we're, the, yeah. we're the ones that are out there drive, driving and, and doing the work. And, and uh, yeah, well, there's just a there's just a lot of years of bad blood really yeah. between the well, drivers and, I think and, and these that, two companies. You know, the, the main issues that we're seeing right now for drivers is, you know, I think number one, the unemployment aspect. Okay, Uber and Lyft business is now gone and they're not able to make any money. Um, you know, so unemployment is kind of exactly what would save them in a situation like this. And number two is kind of, you know, the sick pay, right? Those drivers who, mm. you know, are still driving, but maybe compromised or, you know, I guess this, this was a little bit more of an issue early on too, in kind of that in-between phase, um, right. where drivers, you know, kind of were out there and had to choose between driving and putting food on the table or, you know, not driving at all. And I think a lot of drivers have now made that choice to not drive at all. But I guess, you know, again, right. If, drivers had sick pay, then they could call in sick and wouldn't have to deal with those issues. Because as it is now, if drivers are diagnosed with coronavirus or issued by a doctor, get a doctor's note basically to self-quarantine mm -hmm. for whatever issue, then they are eligible for sick pay from Uber and Lyft. But I guess to me, again, that's kind of like the bare minimum of what Uber and Lyft right. should be providing. Right. And uh, you probably know more about this than me, but I, I, as far as I know, there aren't a lot of people that are actually getting it. There seems I to be I there saw... seems to be a lot a lot of press about <laughs> everybody gets deactivated right away, yeah. right? But then getting the money is like you know it's like squeezing uh, you know. Yeah. So it's been interesting. The sick what out pay. Of yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've been, I call it the sick pay saga. So, you know, Uber announced this sick pay a few weeks ago, and we actually did a story about a driver who 
got a test for coronavirus. He he didn't get the results back yet, but he did get a doctor's mm. note to self-quarantine. And he actually got paid by Uber. And we posted that story. That was probably like one of the first stories. Like that, three, um, three, four weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, almost, that, that was, yeah. yeah maybe three weeks ago. Uh, it yeah. probably was less, but it feels like forever. <laughs> and, um, and so I was sort of almost giving Uber the benefit of the doubt. But then we started seeing all of these kind of in-between stories where drivers mm-hmm. got doctor notes or they were issued a self-quarantine or they had other, their immunocompromised and Uber was changing their, you know, their, their, their wording on the page without telling anyone. And it just seemed like they were, you know, not really living up to their side of the deal. And I don't know exactly what happened. If I had to guess, you know, maybe it was like, oh crap, you know, we have to pay out a lot more <laughs> of mm-hmm. these than we realized. Than we yeah. Um, one thing, you know, I did hear, you know, on to Uber's defense is that, you know, their customer service is now completely uh, in disarray because none of their agents can go into the offices anymore. And so if you've got a bunch of customer support agents in the Philippines, mm. um, you can imagine their home Wi-Fi and, you know, other places that they can work is not very reliable or secure, or, you know, there's a lot of issues that they have to navigate there. So yeah. there's definitely some challenges there, but it seems like in the past couple weeks, really, it's kind of been a nightmare for a lot of these drivers to actually get paid the sick pay. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I post, I've I mean, had a number, I posted we're talk, on we're my, talk, <laughs> we're talking about whether they could handle unemployment, you know, and, and <laughs> just getting two weeks of pay to people who are sick. You know, and and that's that's difficult. It's difficult yeah. for drivers. It's just they they just never seem they never seem to fail to disappoint. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that is uh, definitely. I, I I think that Uber and Lyft are going to come out of this, and probably Uber more so than Lyft. To be frank, I think that mm. Uber is you know they're they're kind of the big dog. And so they get, you know, the good and the bad, right? I mean, Lyft may Mm. have a lot of similar policies and issues, but I think I'm seeing a lot more stories about Uber and drivers and, you know, Uber driver and all of that. And Mm -hmm. I think that's probably fair since they have 70% market share. But uh, I think the other thing too, you know, I guess as far as Uber, you know, and kind of how they've handled this whole situation, I mean, I guess going forward, I'm curious the if this will really change people's minds about the whole employee versus contractor and specifically drivers. I think that, you know, the two big issues that drivers are having right now are getting unemployment and sick pay. Those two issues Mm -hmm. would be not an issue if all drivers were employees. And, you know, in the past when we've surveyed drivers, a majority have said they want to be independent contractors. I think the big caveat is that they want to actually be independent. You know, they want to Mm -hmm. be able to see where passengers are going and, you know, set rates and things like that. But I'm curious to know if you think this could be kind of a shifting or turning point for, you know, maybe in the future, a lot more drivers, you know, say, hey, wow, that pandemic Mm. really screwed me over. I would much rather be an employee and give up a little flexibility and not ever have to have a situation like that happen to me again. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just don't buy the argument that, uh, if we become employees, we're going to necessarily lose our flexibility. Oh, really? You know? I mean, it's already happening in New York City, right? In New York City, drivers have a minimum pay, which is one component of being an employee. And now if there's a minimum right. pay, right, Uber and Lyft can't let you log on whenever and wherever you want. They don't want you logging on in you know, the middle of nowhere on a Tuesday at 3 p.m. So you can't log mm. in there anymore, right? So you know, there's definitely a lot that it's impossible to have a loss of flexibility. It just, I think it's really more if that loss of flexibility is worth it. I would say you shouldn't mm-hmm. be driving a Tuesday at 3 p.m. in the middle of nowhere. That's a stupid right. driving strategy, right? right. So right. if anything, right. so- Right. So I think it's, it's more, and that's why it's this is a complex issue. It's more, it's not so much about the loss of flexibility. You can log on whenever and wherever you want and work for 20 or 30 minutes, but do you really need to do that? No, you can give mm-hmm. up a little flexibility if you get a minimum pay. I think that's a good trade-off, right? And so it's just a matter, Mm -hmm. I think it should be a little, you know, the conversation should be a little bit more around what you're giving up, right? If you're just taking, 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 that's never going to work out. Right. Right. Well, to answer your question, no, I don't think this will make any difference. I think I think once it blows over, you know, people are like, okay, we got through that. That's a once in a once in a lifetime experience. And Mm -hmm. now now we're back on track. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to think, oh, we're going to have to go through this again next year. So now I want to be an employee. 
Hmm. I, I, that's, I, I just think human nature is such that, yeah. you know, we're, we're quick to forget and, and we're, we're looking forward and, um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I don't know that I've made up my mind yet. Cause I think it's still kind of evolving. I, I think if you held a gun to my head, I'd probably agree with you. I think people will forget, but I think what's really important, I don't think people are going to forget about the unemployment you know, how this mm. huge fiasco, I don't think they're going to forget about the sick pay. So I think that, you know, going forward, like the legislators, the groups supporting employee mm-hmm. status and AB5, I think they would be much, a much smarter strategy would be to say, hey, do you want unemployment insurance? I don't care. Like, don't worry about the the nomenclature. Who cares what, what the hell it's called? <laughs> do you right. want sick pay in the future, right? Do you want right. unemployment, right? Let's get mm. all those. Like, if they could get all of those things and just not call it employee, I bet you the support among drivers would be so much higher, right? Because yeah. th- that's, that's sort of the funny thing that I've always thought to myself is, right, all of the things that drivers complain to me about and that, you know, want fixed and, you know, want to see more of, it's things like higher pay, you know, being able to negotiate with Uber and Lyft, you know, fighting unfair deactivation. These are sort of all the things that unions could fight for on your behalf or that employee status would get you. But when you call it employee or when you call it a union, you immediately turn off a lot of people, maybe because it's a political issue or whatever. But it is there's definitely an opportunity there. And so that's sort of what. You know, and that's kind of always something that I would, uh, why I would advocate for a thing. That's why I've never been a supporter of AB5, because I know mm. that so many drivers don't want to be employees. But I, I do know that there are things that all drivers care about. In the past, I think it was higher rates, you know, yeah. reducing Uber and Lyft's commission, fi- you know, not being able to be unfairly deactivated and have no way to challenge it. Those are probably you know, three or four of the top things. And I think probably after this pandemic, you could add having some access to unemployment insurance and some think, type of sick pay. Now there's going to be like five things that every single driver cares about. Yeah. Yeah. Drivers will want more of a safety net uh, for, for bad things that can happen. I mean, ultimately it does come down to, you know, if we're employees, can we make more money? You know, that's yeah. really the bottom line. Can I sleep better at night? Can I better take care of my family? Those are the issues that people think about. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a coin toss. Will, will people use this experience to change, uh, you know, their feeling about Uber and Lyft and and their and the driver's relationship to the company? Yeah, and I think it's we'll, a, we'll I think see. you're right. I think it's sort of a we'll see. It's a little early to yeah. you know make a make a decision one way or the other. But you know, I think I'm gonna title this episode "Grading Uber and Lyft's Response to the Coronavirus." So if we're gonna end but, on one final question, but, what but, a... but I'm but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you though, <laughs> if drivers start getting four hundred dollars plus six hundred dollars a week, you know, in unemployment plus a twelve hundred dollar check plus you know some money from a loan, a grant. Drivers are going to be very, very content with w- yeah. with how this turned out, right? Yeah. So, we, and if that's the case, then then you know the future the future being irritated with Uber and Lyft will go away because for many drivers, making a thousand dollars a week, you know, is is not bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's still a lot that has to. But happen. is that a good thing for? Because it was sort of like, well, we were independent contractors and we got this bailout and it all worked out okay. Or is it sort of going to go the opposite way? And it's like, well, we got all this unemployment, we got all the sick pay, and that's what we would get if we were employees. So let's just do that for the next time. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, um, and I guess uh, I'm going to ask ask you now to give, uh, I guess we'll call it just Uber and Lyft um, a grade on their response to the coronavirus so far. What would you say if you had to give them a grade? Mm. D plus D plus D, D plus. Yeah. Yeah. At least they've offered sick pay, which they really didn't have to do. Um, and, and some people are getting it. So it's giving some, some people a little bit of hope. Um, Dara K reaching out and, you know, and asking for government assistance while it's, you know, takes all, all the responsibility off of Uber and Lyft, at least, uh, it brought some attention to to our plight, and 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 perhaps that played some kind of a role in yeah. in um, in the CARES Act. So, you know, it's not an F, but it's certainly not not a very high grade because, I, like I said, drivers are still driving; they're still risking, literally risking their lives, and 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 potentially spreading this disease more uh, because yeah. they're driving. You know, and and some of those some of those rides are definitely 
essential, but I, I, I'm sure the majority of them aren't, yeah. you know, it's people that want to go visit their friend and, you know, whatever, yeah. uh, that don't, those rides don't need to happen. Yeah. I think I'm going to be what grade, what? a little nicer. I'm going to give them a C. The ride shirt guy Campbell. Yeah. Oh, I nice. think, wow. I think, I think we're not, you know, too, we're not you, too far apart. I mean, but you gave them a failing grade. You said that, you know, it's sort of like they got to do this thing over. And I almost like if it was pass fail, I think I would give them a fail. But mm. since we're grading, well, I just made yeah. the arbitrary decision to go A through F. <laughs> I'm going to give them a C. And I think their reasons why were are because at first, um, when they did do the sick pay, that was a big surprise to me. That, like you said, they didn't yeah. have to do that. And I think looking back, it's like, wow, that, you know, that was kind of like the bare minimum of what they mm. should have done. But when they announced the sick pay, they were the Uber was the first company to do that, then Lyft did it, then all of the other gig companies did it. And I think that's actually really going to hurt their argument in the future that drivers are independent contractors, right? Because right. the lawyers right. that are suing them are going to go and look back at that and use that against them, right? And mm -hmm. they're going to use the PPE mm -hmm. and the, you know, the cleaning supplies that they're providing. Cause those are all things that you're not supposed to really provide to an independent contractor. So right. I think they hurt themselves a little bit there, but they kind of understood that either, you know, I guess it was the right thing to do or that they were just going to get killed in the press if they had the like sick, you know, di drivers diagnosed with coronavirus still driving, right. <laughs> driving you, around, you know, yeah, you know, they, uh, yeah. You, you right. know, it was the PR people that, that said, hey, if we can spend a little money on sick pay here, right. we can avoid having someone who is sick continuing to drive. Yeah. You know, because th so, that had to be the that had to be the conversation. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a sick pay. And then, you know, Dara's letter, I think, uh, was definitely a good thing. And, you know, now there's providing supplies and PPE and cleaning supplies. But I think just from the start, I felt like they've been doing not everything right, but a lot of the right things just two to three mm. weeks late. And yep. so that's sort of why I'm giving them a C because I think they passed, but it's like, it's still a C. It's not very good. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> right. you know, pretty right. bad still. Um, and uh, I think that I, like, I think that they should, you know, I, I could never imagine them could, like voluntarily, you know, spending mil hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars contributing to unemployment. But I feel like the government should have made them. And so I can't mm. really blame Uber and Lyft for that part. I think that's more of a issue on the on the government. But that might be a whole topic for another podcast. They, so they just um, so off, they so often just seem to get a pass. You know, I mean, yeah. here here in California, we have AB five. It's the law, you yeah. know, but. No one's enforcing it. No one's telling Uber and Lyft they got to treat us like employees. You know, it's just, yeah. it's it's kind of this too big to fail thing. Yeah, and I mean, you could kind of imagine, I, and it's really, and that's why it's sort of like, I think, again, at a human level, you want to help out these drivers, whatever, who pays, who cares, you know, just get money into their hands as quickly as possible. But it is, it would have been interesting if, you know, the, the governor of California came down and said, hey, Uber and Lyft, you need to treat drivers like employees ASAP, get them that sick pay, get them out that unemployment. And then it's sort of like your first experience as an employee driving for Uber and Lyft is like, wow, this employee thing is pretty <laughs> sweet. Um, I think that could have been very interesting but uh you know as always jay i appreciate you coming on the podcast and we are going to simulcast this one in a couple different places on the podcast but also on the youtube channel so if you're watching if you're listening right now i would love to hear from you in the comments uh what letter grade you would give uber and lyft um you know what, uh, to their response to coronavirus let us know what grade you would give them and also why um you don't have to go into all the reasons why but i'd love to hear from you guys because you're the ones who are, you know, directly affected by, you know, Uber and Lyft not providing PPE. They're, you know, might be directly putting your life at risk or not paying an unemployment. And if you can't now pay your rent, that's, you know, a very big effect on your life. So I'd love to hear from you. And also we'll see how we can help and keep you educated and informed. So without further ado, could, Jay, um, could, yeah. yeah. Could, I, could I ask uh, for the drivers also who are going to comment, what are you doing in response to this situation? How many, I'm curious, like who who actually has a plan B, and you know, yeah. what what are you doing? Or did you, did you go deliver groceries, or you know, have you built a new website, a new business? What you know, what what are you doing in response to this? I think that's real curious. Plus, it would be very uplifting for a lot of the drivers to see that yeah. other drivers are you know taking some bold action out there to um, you know in response to this, not just yeah, no, that's uh, a 
Yeah. Great question. And I know we actually have some upcoming content, you know, we're not going to, you know, I, I think some of these unemployment issues and all that are going to be hopefully resolved relatively soon. And, you know, we're, we're definitely looking for to highlight some stories and, you know, do some more content about, you know, kind of things you can do in this downtime to, um, you know, mm. whether it's plan B life after rideshare or whatever it is. So mm. definitely stay tuned for that. If you're a driver and, uh, as always, you know, um, Jay, if people want to follow your work, learn more from you and, uh, your, your skills where can they find you nomadj.com nomad j a y n o m a d j a y dot com yeah All right. and there's, cool. there's a there's a form there you can click on contact and send me any any communications yeah Awesome. And then obviously you are a frequent contributor on the Rideshare Guy YouTube channel. Um, so I you guys am. know where to find that. You may be uh, listening or watching to that right now. And uh, also Jay has his podcast, uh, The Rideshare Dojo, which you might be listening to. So um, appreciate all your hard work, Jay. And I know you and I are going to keep working hard to keep drivers uh, educated, informed, and uplifted. Keep, we're going to so, keep on keeping uh, on. Yep. All it's right. all Rideshare all the time. Yep. Great. Take care, Jay. Okay. Bye-bye. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.